I found it on Rayma Radio. Hey you, are you a youth leader or influencer in any shape, form or capacity? Well, must be a headache, right? Trying to be relevant to a generation that's stuck on their mobile devices. Does this sound like you? Well, fret not, there's festival. At festival, we strive to help you brain all this and more. And even help you, help your youth, brain it all. We've lined up over 50 workshops with experienced speakers and facilitators to meet all sorts of needs your youth ministry may have. Sounds too good to be true? Well, head on over to festival.my to sign yourself up and join us at the one-stop resource for all things youth. I'll see you there. Hi, I'm Pastor Victor Lee from Bible College of Malaysia. I want to challenge you to sign a course with us. Uh, we have different modules today. We have short-term courses where we finish within one week. And then we have night classes for those who people who can't come for the day class. And we have different extension centers around Malaysia. So our program covers from Certificate of Biblical Studies to a Master of Divinity. So there are different levels for everyone. I'm sure there's something for you. It's our purpose to equip the saints for the harvest that is to come. So I want to encourage you, log on to our website www.bcm.org.my where you get all the information, sign up a course today. So you don't need to wait for an intake, we have intake every trimester. So just feel free and log on and then call us and sign up with us. Hi friends, this week's midweek service sermon was from Jacinta Tagal at Holy Trinity Bukit Bintang entitled, No More Shame Shame. Look out for that. And now for this week's interview. Hey, you're listening to Rema Radio, a weekly podcast on faith, culture, music, and more. This is Jason. This is Adeline. And in the studio, we have two very, very special guests. I always say special because they really are very special. <laughs> Everyone's special to us. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, special because I just met them yesterday. And uh, as, I mean, as, even though we just met, we are like you know, like close friends. Yeah, the, we sense a, a sense of uh, uh, family. And just hearing from them has been really, really encouraging. Uh, they are Pastor John Malcolm, uh, who grew up in Singapore, but has been in 22 years in ministry in Hong Kong. And he has been a senior pastor for 14 years uh, in church is in downtown Kowloon and uh, today he's overseeing 14 churches uh, which comprises of 80 nationalities and 60 uh, churches in 8 countries. Yeah, and we also have Pastor Kevin Ha who is the uh, senior pastor of Calvary Church Dong Chong um, in Novotel and it's uh, he's been a pastor there coming to 12 years. Yeah, and uh, the, the church that Pastor Kevin uh, pastors is a is a, a branch. Uh, how was it? It's a church plant from. Yes, church yeah, plant. Yes, from yeah. yeah. So welcome to the studio, both thank of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Yes. Yeah. So we were talking to to these pastors and 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 really their church if, if, as we introduce them. Oh, it's, it's really quite a mix of people, isn't it, your, your church? Yeah, how many nationalities? Well, over the years, we have had about uh, 80, uh, 80 different nationalities. I mean, countries we didn't even know existed in the world. <laughs> people walk in. When you look at them first, you wouldn't think too much. And next thing you realize, wow, where is that in the world? You know, yeah, so yeah. it's a good a lesson, in, uh, you know, for us to learn. But at the same time, it's amazing where God brings in people, you know. And uh, we have about eighty nationalities or so uh, over the years that have gone. And sometimes, you know, it's it, Hong Kong is such a melting point, you know, of different nationalities and cultures. And suddenly we sit down together. We don't even realize that we are from different countries. <laughs> you know, you know, you can have like a, a, a two couples, right, and not realizing all the four individuals are from different nationalities or different wow. countries. It's amazing, but it's just being there together, mm. you know, that mm. makes it so mm. uh, exciting and fun, mm. you know. Maybe a bit of background. Uh, so, uh, Pastor John, you're from Singapore. Yes. And Pastor Kevin, you're from Malaysia. Yes, that's uh, what, right. What are you doing in, in Hong Kong, pastoring churches there? Yeah, it, it was just amazing how I, how I went over, you know, never in my mind that I'll be able to go to Hong Kong. At that time, I was working in Singapore and my wife was working in Hong Kong. And what line but, were you in? Yeah, I was in the uh, food industry, ah. yeah, in the restaurant, I was working there. But it was really by a divine appointment, yeah, because one of the uh, directors of operation of McDonald's uh, Hong Kong, he was fl- they, they had a convention actually at in Singapore. I thought you were going to say Operation Mobilization, OM, but Operation of McDonald's, right. OM, yes, OM yes, as well. Yes, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, to inter- yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. He, he, was, he is the uh, director of operation. He was flying on a flight and my wife is, uh, you know, uh, is is uh, a cabin attendant is a cabin crew in that flight and uh, she was able to talk to the uh, 
that 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 gentleman and he said hey you know is your husband interested to come to hong kong you know i can just bring him over and employ him in our organization it was just that simple just that divine appointment and what year was this oh that was in uh, 1992 when i went over to hong kong i see yeah and, and you, you just make the decision. Yeah, just pack your bags and just left. Yeah. Yeah. My wife is over there. I need to be there with her. <laughs> That's God I don't want to lose her. <laughs> yeah, this that's a very important point. Yeah. Huh? Okay, yeah. Okay. And Pastor John, I mean, how from Singapore and how, how do you end up in Hong Kong? Um my, I grew up in Singapore, you know, education and everything. And uh, the church that we were part of was, you know, we were church planning and uh, we had church in Hong Kong. And so the uh, pastor used to come over to Hong Kong, you know, and we got to know him. And when I finished school, he said, John, why don't you come over for a little while, you know, just to be, help me out. And, uh, and I always had a heart for ministry. You know, that's been something that I, it's, I, I, I had a very clear mind on that. And uh, so I just came over there for, you know, I said, why don't you come for three months, you know, and see, and uh, b- because I finished school and I wanted to really go into ministry. So I was uh, pretty much set to go into Bible college. So I was ready. I had my place, the uh, Bible college to go to. I have my confirmation, everything go to uh, Bible college in America, all set, four square Bible college and everything was ready to go. Yes, in California it was. And the thing is, and it was for three months. And the pastor said, would you just extend a little bit more? I said, okay, six months. So three months ended up 22 years. <laughs> That's <laughs> like Wife and three extension. kids. <laughs> <laughs> three months to six months six to months, 22 years. Three, three years. <laughs> That's quite an exponential three, jump there. And a yeah. wife and three kids. <laughs> ah. Yep. So, Great by addition. By yes, the way. Yes, yes, it's, so it's, it's been a fantastic journey. No regrets. If I would do it all over again, I wouldn't change it, anything. And, uh, you know, I would say uh, what I thought I might have missed out by not going there, God had made it up um, many times over. Mm. So it is, uh, you know, it's just amazing how God, uh, you know, it, it's like uh, you, you feel like, well, I wanted to do that, but I think I believe it was a divine disruption. Mm. You know, it was divine disruption, and I thank God for divine disruption in our lives, mm. and we need that. We need that. We need that. Yeah, I believe that. We, we, we sometimes need God to just come in and mess up our plans and, and just wake us up to our senses and put us in Hong Kong for yes. 22 years. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I, I've not been to Hong yeah. Kong personally. I mean, what what is it about the country that drew both of you there to to be? Hong- Adeline has been to Hong Kong. I've well, been once. there once, yes. Once. Okay. And uh, I see that uh, there's really a lot of people. That was the first impression that I got in Hong Kong. And uh, I wonder if uh, the business really caught up with uh, you. I mean, living there. Because everything seems so fast-paced there, you know, people walk faster, <laughs> talk faster, everything is fast, fast, fast. Yeah. So maybe you can share like your experience I would think and that, how that it would, feels like. Yeah, that would fit for you because you talk quite fast as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They are even faster. Oh, faster than you. Yeah, even faster than me. I find that hard me. to believe. Like I find that hard to believe. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But what about Hong Kong that, that, that drew you guys from? Yeah, I, I mean, with, with me, it was, uh, it was not that difficult because at that time I was, uh, you know, not too old. <laughs> How old were you then? Uh, probably I was in my 30s, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, I was able to... Initially, it was like, wow, this is a packed place and uh, and uh, very busy and all. But eventually, we, you know, we we grow together with it and, and we enjoy it, actually. At that time, we were young. Me and my wife, we were young. And uh, we enjoy, it. we en- we actually enjoy ourselves over there. Everything was convenient and everything was new, you know, with the MTR, uh, with uh, everything was new. The food was new. Uh, it's, a, it's a different kind of culture. Food is good. Yeah, food is good, you know, and the dim sum and... Best in the world. Yeah. The world. I'm getting hungry just listening to that. That's good for lunch. So we really enjoy it, actually, the fast pace, but we got used to it. Yeah. Pastor John, do you speak Cantonese? Uh, si, si, eh? si, si. Oh. Yeah. Maybe no. better than you. Just, just, well, just enough to last me for 22 years. That's about it. Just 22 years. To order food. Yes. But, but I think for us, like in, in, in Hong Kong, one, one of the things about Hong Kong is uh, the idea of people coming to Hong Kong is to make money, bottom right. line. Right. People come there to work and to earn money. Mm-hmm. Uh, why would people want to stay there? If you make money, you can have a good life. Mm-hmm. You know, you can have a good, uh, you can maintain a good lifestyle. So if what really attracts people to Hong Kong, uh, it's, it's jobs. Mm-hmm. It's jobs. And that's what you know, a, lot, a lot of the people came there are still coming there because of good high paid jobs and uh, job opportunities. Mm-hmm. Uh, even many of the Hong Kong people who have migrated overseas, they come back to uh, work in Hong Kong in their own country because the job opportunity and it pays it's really good. fantastic. So. Let's go Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to take a short break right now, but when we come back, we're going to talk to the two pastors about the churches that they pastor and the, the people that end up in their churches. Radio. 
Shalom. My name is Philip So. I would like to share this scripture with you from Luke chapter 18 verse 27 which says, The things impossible with man is possible with God. It is found in the Gospel of Luke, 18th chapter on the 27th verse. Amen. Red, my radio. Welcome back to Rema Radio, a weekly podcast on faith, culture, music and more. And we're in the studio talking to Pastor John Malcolm and Pastor Kevin Ha, who are pastoring two different churches in Hong Kong. We talked earlier about the how they ended up in Hong Kong and pastoring there. But now let's talk a bit, a bit more about uh, the, the different members that they have. The, what, what brings people to your church typically? How did they end up in Calvary in uh, a church in Hong Kong and Calvary Church in Tung Chung? Hong Kong, for about 150 years, has been a port. And people come and people go. So that's been the history of Hong Kong. And it's been a port for uh, work. And, uh, and work is what really brings people, especially in the uh, international uh, uh, side where we are all part of, in ministry and churches that we are part of. A lot of people come for work. And uh, anytime, you know, they can work like, uh, you know, like, you know, for three months to end up like a few decades, <laughs> they may end up staying. So what happens? It's jobs that really brings in people. And it's a very, very transient city. You know, and then it's just and, and a great thing is you can make you get an opportunity to make friends from different walks of life, and so basically it's is uh, people's uh, jobs that really brings in uh, into our churches, mm. you know, and uh, more and more companies are coming in, establishing themselves in Hong Kong and also as a launch pad into China and different organizations. So they make Hong Kong a base. So and and part of that is when they uh, for those of Christians we they look for a church, mm. they come in, and also you know and also. So an opportunity for the church to even reach out to those who are uh, looking for the uh, you know finding their way through their mm. spiritual journey. And it helps that Pastor Kevin, your church is in the airport vicinity. Yes, uh, and because of the nature of uh, my wife' uh, job, she works in the uh, airport. She flies with uh, Cathay Pacific, so we live in uh, in Tung Chung itself, which is very near to the airport. A lot of residential families areas. And uh, we, we have different uh, uh, airline staff that uh, work in the uh, airport. So it's, it's a good place. We have Indonesians, we have Thais, we have uh, Koreans and Japanese, Malaysian, Singaporean. So a lot of uh, Indians, Sri Lankan, uh, Nepalese, a lot of uh, a diverse kind of uh, different, uh, different races and culture over there. So it, it was easy for us because, uh, you know, we do outreaches, we pass out flyers over there and uh, people hear about our church and they just walk in. Mm -hmm. So 80 nationalities... 80 different yes. cultures coming together. Yeah. Uh, what what would you say is the... Of course, you said that faith is the thing that brings them together. But how has it been pastoring a church like that? Were there any challenges? Or were there any points where, you know, the culture got in the way? Uh, one culture in itself is quite a challenge, all right? Uh, but, you know, when you have uh, multiple, you know, di such a diversified, uh, you know, uh, a group of people, it, it's it's really a challenge. For example, if you uh, take, for instance, uh, working with a Filipino uh, okay. culture, uh, what happens is uh, they think so different. The one from the north, they think different from the south, you know, from the south, you know. And, even the same country. Uh, same yeah. country, you know, they can even speak this and, and from one uh, province to the other, you know, and, and it's the same thing. And if you go to China, if you go to India, different places. So uh, what we have really seen is that um, we can deal issues culturally or we can deal with the issues biblically. As when we become Christians, we are in Christ. Right. And in Christ meaning our culture is in Christ. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that we throw away our traditions. Jesus or we, culture. Jesus <laughs> culture, there you go. And we don't, we don't, we throw away our, you know, the, uh, you know, the things that we, uh, the culture that, uh, that we have. But the thing is we identify who we are in Christ. And we, uh, for example, when we solve issues, we got to solve it biblically, mm -hmm. not culturally. Mm -hmm. Because what is okay for me may not be okay for you. Mm -hmm. In your culture, it's acceptable. You know, that behavior is acceptable. But my culture, it's very, uh, uh, it, it's very, it, it's very abusive. It's, it's, and it's too strong for, you know, and, and it's a definite no, no. Oh, no. So what best way is, let's look at it biblically. And that's what helps us as pastors. Otherwise, I think we'll go, uh, uh, you know, we'll go in circles. <laughs> 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 you know, I think, I, I believe so, Pastor Kevin, too, is, uh, you know, we, that's a challenge we've, you know. Yes. You know, we, we do have a lot of challenges, but the, the, the main thing I want to uh, uh, share is that, uh, you know, yes, challenges will come and go, and we have the word of the Lord that will guide us, you know, doctrinal issues or even with uh, cultural issues and all. We are, we are one in Christ. We have the love of Christ. 
but it's always the Lord, you know. And just recently, you know, I went through some challenges as well. And uh, but uh, truly, you know, the Lord is in it all. He 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 will plan everything for us, and uh, he will direct and guide us through. And the Lord really spoke to me. I was really hurt and and down and discouraged. And there are some people that left the church and all. And it's at that moment when I was in the park, when I was downcast and discouraged, it is the Lord that really spoke to me. You know, He said, rise up. Why are you being so discouraged and downcast? Rise up. Make some right food decisions, you know. Yeah. And uh, I've planted you in the house of the Lord, you know. Nothing will be able to... And then He began to show me the pine trees that is planted in the uh, park there. You know, rain or shine, typhoon, hurricane comes, but they're still standing there because they are planted deeply. And so we pastors as well, you know, uh, uh, challenges will come and all, but it's always the Lord's uh, planting. It's the Lord that planted us in our church. And it's the Lord that will give us the wisdom and the knowledge uh, uh, and direction that will guide us to, to, to help us with, deal with uh, all the different issues, different nas- nationalities, different issues. So we need to really seek the Lord. Yeah. So, so is it a very conscious decision, I mean, to, to have this uh, kind of uh, church? I mean, the, there is kingdom culture and then there's also the church culture. So I, I think it was very intentional for, for, for you, for you to, to, to lead your people. In yes, the, yes. Yeah. I, I think we, we got, uh, got used to it now because we've been doing it for over the, many years now, so meaning that, that, that's how we train ourselves to think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think consciously we got to keep it in, uh, in, in reminder for those who are coming in. Okay, and you know uh, uh, the the African uh, 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 you know uh, uh, culture will come in and they say, "Hey, this is what we do." And they say, "Hold on a second, uh, uh, you know what we are here is we are on a, the, it's a biblical culture, it's a biblical base. What does the Word of God say about this?" And somebody else will say, "No, that's okay with us." You know, and as a pastor, you are torn between who do I please, and, and next thing you know, you got fights like a <laughs> you, you got a world war that's going on in your <laughs> church, right? International war. And as Pastor uh, has said it very uh, 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 eloquently, that it has to be. Uh, the word of God, because the word of God, you know, it's a plumb line. It's the one that guides us, and you know, and, and it's the one that directs us, and it's the one, uh, you know, and because we are all in Christ. Hmm. If you're all in Christ, that means uh, we are in the Word, right? Amen. And we're in the Word. That means we are people of the Word, and the Word of God has we to be guided and directed, and that's what really helps us. I mean, we can have a lot of uh, cross cultural, you know, talks and everything, and that's good. It has its place. It has its place. But I think end of the day, bottom line, it comes to what are we doing? Amen. Is it accordance to the word of God? Mm. Bottom line, mm. period. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Pastor, will you say that the word of God in action is love? Because there are so many different cultures coming together. And of course, there will be points of disagreement. And, you know, so how, how do you actually keep yourself in that, you know, with that love from God and love from people to not have that fatigue? Because sometimes in ministry, we do have that fatigue of giving. So how do you keep yourself alive in, you know, having that, that love in your heart for people of different culture? Well, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it can be tiring at times because the thing is, the challenge is, uh, we know we have things in place, but the challenge is, I get it. But whether they get it, <laughs> it's another story. You know, we have, like I said, we have things in place, how we operate, how we do things. Okay. And uh, like I look at Pastor Kevin and I, we know what to do in, in the right. situation. Yes. But no, we can spend next few hours talking to somebody, mm. trying to convince them until we turn blue and they turn <laughs> green and whatever happens in all different shades. And the thing is, if they don't get it, you know, it's like we're ready to pull our hair. It's like, oh, Jesus, come back and just pastor <laughs> this church. All right. Okay. You, you know, you are the chief chef. You know, you come and do, uh, and I, I believe in the midst of all that, that's where constantly, I think, it really comes down to our relationship with the Lord. Mm. Right. You know, where we are grounded, we know that we know. End of the day, we got to do what we got to do. Even in the Bible, we look at many times the prophets. You know, like Jeremiah, for instance. I mean, they would preach the gospel. They would, I mean, they pour out their life. They go out there, they hear from the Lord. They come back and they're like, God, why aren't they listening to me? You know, <laughs> this is your word that I'm bringing, not Jeremiah's word. It's not my own word. I'm not, I didn't cook this up. You gave it to me lord and right. they're not even listening and there are times like that we do face that but the thing is i think constantly we got to keep it encouraged understand it is the lord the thing is this it's not my church right it's the lord's church mm-hmm. he's it's his church it's his people 
-hmm. you know, and we are, you know, even though we are pastors, we could be pioneering that work, but still we are just stewards that he, we, he is the chief shepherd. Mm -hmm. And we just had to, you know, end of the day, just draw the strength from him, mm -hmm. like, you know, and, and, and so that we won't get the, the disappointed and the disappointments are going to come and say, God, we're not these people going to get it. <laughs> you know, this, <laughs> it's right there. It's all written there, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think constantly we keeping our relationship with the Lord uh, in a way, uh, you know, grounded and knowing, knowing the word of God will work. Mm -hmm. It works, mm -hmm. and it will, and it will not return void. If we, if we, if I personally stick to the word, mm. it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I might not see it immediately, but it's going to happen. Right. <laughs> yes, it's great stuff. Uh, we'll take a short break right now, but when we come back, we hear more uh, from Pastor John. And Pastor Ken. I'm Roden Wong. I'm from FGA KL. Yeah, let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, Father Lord, we just want, to, just want to thank you and praise you, Lord. Indeed, your Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, and let your kingdom come, and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and let your will be done in our lives too, Lord. And Father Lord, we just want to thank you for your love uh, that, that you have for us. It's because of your love and your grace that you love us so much that you send your only begotten Son as a sacrificial lamb for us, Father Lord, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Father Lord, I just want to bring before you all our family members and uh, associates and friends, Father, who doesn't know you yet, Father Lord. Father, we pray, Father Lord, that indeed, as you have touched me, Father Lord, we pray that you will also open up their heart, their, their, open up their eyes and their ear, Father Lord, that they will see and know the truth, the truth about you, Father Lord, the love that you also have for them, Father Lord, so that truly, Father Lord, one day they will come to know you and uh, to receive our Lord Jesus Christ into their life as their personal Lord and Savior, Father Lord, and born again into your kingdom, Father Lord. I claim this word from you, Father Lord, that one in a family is safe, all will be safe always, Father Lord. I just want to thank you, I want to praise you and give you all the glory. All this I pray in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Amen. Hi, now we are back with Pastor John and Pastor Kevin. So Pastor Kevin, just want to know, um, what is your uh, experience of having, you know, loving people in action? Sometimes it's easy to say that, you know, you love people of different nationalities, but to, to really put that into action, how do we actually do that? Uh, is there any personal stories you'd like to share? <laughs> I, yeah, I think I think being being a Malaysian uh, does help too because we, you know, we live in multicultural kind of a society, you know, and it does help us too because we when we are there we see different nationalities and we are able to see you know uh, how they live, how they speak, and all. But of course there will be uh, challenges and everything. But uh, you know we try to to have uh, like for instance like. Uh, the, the, the church that I'm, I'm uh, pastoring, you know, we have a lot of families with children. So we try to do activities, you know, that are family-based, you know, just to get them together. But, but the, the, the thing is about, uh, sometimes it's, it's, uh, people don't get it. It's very difficult to love them and all, but it's still the word of the Lord, no matter what I feel, you know. I still have to follow the word of the Lord. I don't have to, you know, I must I constantly tell myself uh, not to be uh, emotionally, uh, not to, to, to do things or make decisions in the flesh and not to, to, to be careful of what I speak and all. And uh, I just have to follow, you know, the way of the Lord, what Jesus did, you know, mm. with a servanthood heart. He came uh, as God himself. He came down to earth and uh, in, in the form of a servant, and he came down as a slave. He was there to, to serve the people. So, you know, I, I, I keep on constantly telling myself that uh, we are there to serve them and to love them just as Christ loved the church, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I like uh, how both of you uh, keep going back to the Word because that is the standard, isn't it? Uh, uh, the Word of God and, and the Word made flesh, Jesus so he is the example that we need to aspire towards and, and be. And, uh, and, and it's the same for uh, your, your church members. The more like Jesus they are, the more they, they less of them and more of Jesus, then they, the more they, everyone gets along. The more things happen, the more kingdom-minded and the more ministry and, and, and God's purposes are fulfilled in, in their lives. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing which I, a revelation for me is that um, 
I, I realize people get offended easily because there's too, too much of themselves mm-hmm. and not enough of Jesus. Mm-hmm. What, what's offense anyway? Offense happens when there's a lot of me I, because this is my right. This is who I am. I deserve this. And then when someone comes in and, and does things that, that doesn't flow with me, then I get offended. And, and I have to check myself many times as well. Like, why, why, am I, why am I offended? Is it because there's too much of me and not enough of, of Christ? Yeah, so I, I, I myself have, have uh, experienced that. So how, how would you probably advise uh, pastors in Malaysia who, who are running churches, maybe not as diverse as, as you guys, uh, but with members who are, you know, maybe easily offended or easily, you know, there's, there's this unity because unity is such an important thing to guard. How, do, how does a church guard its unity? You know, when you say culture, you know, nowadays, one of the things that we do, we do come from culture as nationalities, but today we have another culture in the culture, and that's a culture, it's my culture. Hmm. It's me. So it's individual it's culture. Not even, it's my culture. It's not even your culture. people group. It's not even, exactly. it's just a me culture. It's what you're saying hmm. just now. It's not that you're offended the way I talk of maybe my Malaysian accent or my Thai accent or my uh, Singaporean accent. It's not so much, it's me. It's John. It's my, it's my culture. Hmm. It's me. And, you know, the thing is, that's more precious to me than anything else, okay? Uh, if you make fun of my language, okay, we laugh, laugh it out or something. But I think people are getting more sensitive because it, it's, it's more self-centered. And that's the culture that we are dealing with. And that's the same time, if I would say, it's a culture and a religion that we have today. Mm-hmm. And that religion and that culture is very much in the church. And I think that's really is to be identified. And I would say to pastors, uh, whether, whether it's in Malaysia, you know, and uh, first of all, to address those things. You got to address, uh, for instance, my wife and I, you know, if you look at us, uh, you know, we would think, oh, they are from the same background. I met my wife in Hong Kong and she's from Malaysia. She was a uh, family uh, born in, uh, uh, they're from Saramban. And but the thing is, my wife and I, we are still from different cultures. We might look, well, it's, it's about the same. No, I believe even if you come from the same language group, mm-hmm. same village, right. you were a family with two different families or two different cultures. Right. You know, and I think it's constantly, I think we got to, uh, it's important for us to address those things that we are different. Mm-hmm. We are different. We are diversified culturally, individually. And as we, ad- and the thing is this, uh, what is the most important thing for us? Mm-hmm. What is the most important for us as a church? Is it to say your culture is better, my language is better, my, my thing is better? You know, everybody will say that. But what, why are we, what is our commonality? You know, think about this. Right now we are in the studio. I mean, we, there's no reason for us to be in the studio. You think right. about it. Mm-hmm. But what is it that really brought us here? I mean, I don't need to be with here with my, 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 my <laughs> Pastor Kevin. I'm out. He wouldn't know me. I wouldn't know him. We wouldn't know you guys. It's the Lord that has brought us together. The, our de- common denominator here is Jesus. Yeah. And he brought us here. And he brought us here a number of years ago with my Pastor uh, Kevin here. And you guys, even why did we even meet last night? Right. It's because the Lord has brought us. And I think that the bottom fundamental thing is mm-hmm. to bring it understand. It's the, because of the Lord, you and I are here under this roof. Mm. Right. Okay, and we are all walks of life, different cultures, and and to have that understanding. When we have that uh, understanding, I think we will understand better why we do what we do. How can we address? I think addressing these issues is a. It's I would say, Pastor Kevin, would be it's ongoing. Mm. You know, it's not just okay. We got it done. No, it's ongoing because we're going to be acting. How do you discipline your kids? Oh, in Malaysia, you know, we can. You know, for example, in the culture, it, 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 we're talking about in, in, in say in Singapore and Malaysia, we would, you know, we would cane our kids. You know, we would give them a spank. You know, Western cultures, are, oh, don't you ever do that? No, we, you know, it's like, hey, no, we do that. You know, and we have a cane in the home. We have a rotan in the house. You know, kind of thing. They said, no, no, we don't do that. It's so biblical. biblical. <laughs> what do you do? You know, and then say, well, it's working for us. Give them a timeout. They said, what timeout? We don't have timeouts. We have. We get real, uh, you know, we, we, like in our cult, in culturally, we, 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 we teach uh, uh, discipline by embarrassing uh, right, uh, yes. you know, publicly. Asian and uh, whereas the Western will say, no, you don't embarrass them. You, you treat them in a, in a different way. And uh, mm-hmm. so, see, you, constantly we are having this. But we got to understand why are we doing this? You know, the thing is, you know, we are here, what brought us here is the Lord. The right. uh, Lord has brought us here. And that's what has brought us together. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and if he brought us together, we got to do it the way he does. Right. You know, and addressing the importance of uh, the unity. I think it's a constantly we got to be reminding that. And we do that uh, intentionally. 
mm-hmm. uh, not all the time through a sermon, but we always give, you know, glad, you know, for example, Wilson Church, we are so excited to see so many different nationalities. Mm-hmm. Isn't it a, a taste of heaven? Yeah. You know, can you see how heaven is going to be like? Yeah. Yeah. And same thing, what we're saying is, hey, let's be united, might as well, because get, guess what? We're all going to get along one way or the other in heaven. <laughs> we're going to meet each other for eternity. Exactly. <laughs> you hate somebody right now, you might just be your neighbor in heaven. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think with me, uh, my, my encouragement would be, you know, not that I have arrived or not that I have achieved it. I know I, I, know I still have my struggles and all. But we need to understand that there is a... Uh, you know the what whatever the Lord has given to us. You know even uh, uh, the, the the remnant of people, those people that are not offended, that are still in the church. That's the group of people that the Lord has given to us. Of course, we are saddened if people get hurt, offended, and they leave the church and all. You know we try our best to reach out to them and to get them back in. But you know there are moments. You know we need to understand that uh, people they have different uh, level of maturity in their life. Spirit. Some people they might be very strong. In the word of God, they might look very spiritual, they talk well, they speak well, but we don't know. Emotionally, they might be, you know, uh, very uh, down or negative and all. So different different kinds of maturity, we need to understand that. But uh, it's important to understand that there is a, a, a remnant of, of people that the Lord has given to us, that are faithful to us, mm-hmm. that are committed to the church. And uh, these are the group of people that, uh, you know, we have to care for them take good care of them and, uh, you know, help them, uh, raise them up to be, you know, uh, um, to, to train them up, uh, raise them up so that they, they can go out and uh, reach out to someone and plant a church or, or whatever. So the remnant uh, of people that the Lord has given us, you know, that uh, we are shepherd to them. And, and one of the things that the Lord really recently uh, spoke to me is that, you know, as uh, as pastors, usually, you know, we don't uh, uh, teach the congregation. We don't demand for certain things that are biblical. For instance, you know, loyalty. You know, we we need to uh, when when some new people come into the church, or there is you know one or two people that start to talk bad about the leaders, uh, talk bad about the pastors, and uh, you know, uh, uh, where's the loyalty? Mm. We need to talk teach the our congregation of people that they need to be loyal. Uh, uh, of course, to God, uh, but they need to be loyal to the pastors. They need to be loyal, you know, show loyalty by, you know, kind of like uh, helping, like to be a peacemaker, sorting things out, you know. If somebody have an issues with a leader or with a pastor, direct that person, you know, to the leaders and to the pastors and, you know, uh, talk it over and get it done. So pastors, sometimes uh, we don't uh, 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 demand certain things, uh, uh, certain qualities from the congregation of people. We we are uh, uh, kind of like shy. You know, there there are people that uh, they 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 don't come in. They kind of like they are not listening to the sermon. They have to flow. You know, every Sunday when a pastor begins to preach the word of the Lord, they must be listening to the word of the Lord. They must flow together with the word of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And you have, you've seen people, they walk in and out of the church and they are outside there, they drink coffee, you know, they're chit-chatting out there. So these are the people that, you know, eventually, you know, uh, uh, they, they kind of like, they don't listen to the pastor, they don't flow. And uh, so we, this, these are the challenges. Yeah. yeah. And these time. are the people that get offended, mm-hmm. you know, because they don't listen to the sermon, they don't listen to the message. The yeah. pastor is the one that God has ordained in the church. Yes. The pastor is the one that hears from the Lord. He prays and he studies the word of the Lord. He hears from God and he begins to speak forth the word of the Lord mm-hmm. to the congregation, you know. Mm-hmm. And the congregation needs to flow with, with the messages that the pastors, that God has laid in, 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 the, in, in the hearts of the pastor. Mm-hmm. So they must flow with the, we must teach our congregation. Yes. You know? yeah. Yeah. All, all in the spirit That's of right. unity, you know? yes. guarding right. a unity and, and guarding the, the, the call that God has upon your lives and your church and your ministries. Right. Yeah. So that, um, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you so much for being so real in your sharing yeah. and, you. and, and just you. sharing from your experience. Exactly. I'm sure people out there, especially pastors who are listening, uh, would have uh, got the thing or two from today. Uh, you've been listening to uh, Pastor John Malcolm and uh, Pastor Kevin Ha from uh, both uh, pastoring churches in Hong Kong. And this is Jason. And this is Adeline. Signing off. God bless. Guarda fiori già mattina 
Question journal key record right out in fret rai check it credente non Once in every life there comes a time We walk out all alone and into the light That moment won't last but then we remember it again when we close our eyes like stars across the sky Kir pera vincere tu dovra vincere Music from Element. This episode was recorded, edited, and mixed by Moses Chan at Prodio Studio. Do connect with us at facebookcom rad 10 Comment, like, and share our weekly shows so we can do more. Tune in next week for the next midweek service and interview. Till then, God bless. Rayma Radio is a non-profit initiative by the Love Malaysia Media Project. 
time, talent and treasure is put into creating the content you listen to. Your support enables us to keep this going and expand further. Log on to www.raymarad.io slash support to find out how you can partner with us in creating value-adding content that ministers to the masses. Once again, that's www.raymarad.io slash support. Let's get the word out there. I found it on Rima Radio.